I'm back. Hello. Part two of the video, the continued story of yesterday. And I'll just wait for a few seconds just so that a few people can uh, come online and, and watch live. So, <clears throat> wow, yesterday's video, my God. 1700 people viewed the video and I swear I thought I'll do this video so a few people can watch it and might find it interesting and 1700 people viewed it I mean what the hell god um, I've had so many comments private messages phone calls um, it's just gone crazy everybody just appreciating what I said which is brilliant because that's that's the reason I wanted to share my story so today is part two and I feel like I'm under a lot of pressure now to make it as good hopefully everything that I said yesterday will connect and, and come together in today's second part of the story so just to briefly recap on what I said yesterday I was telling my story of how I became a photographer and how I got into business because it's something that I've only done and I say only it's nine years next month but in terms of figuring out what I was good at and what I, I found my passion I found the thing I was good at I found my passion and I found something that I really enjoyed and I was able to make a living out of it and I've done that in in the last nine years um, because when you're younger you really don't know what it is you want to do and even now you might not know what it is you're supposed to be doing and it's a case of like trusting destiny to, to get you to where you're supposed to be um when i was at school and, and i was at college if you asked me then what i wanted to be i wanted to be a p teacher i was good at sport i was good at running um and and I, that's what I would have said I wanted to be, um, is a PE teacher. And I did all right in GCSEs. Um, I didn't do as great in their levels. I wasn't academically clever. I wasn't brainy. I was creative and I was a hard worker, but studying geography A level, learning about sand and like the composition, the composites within the earth, just weren't my thing and, and I, I couldn't, I really, really struggled. <clears throat> so I didn't get the grades in A-levels and I didn't go to university. Um, I decided to go straight into uh, work and I got an apprenticeship as a trainee manager. Um, so I've worked in the retail, worked in motor industry and I worked in education. So then with the jobs that I had done up until the age of 34. And I, yesterday I spoke about um, doing these jobs and every, I always enjoyed my jobs but when I went and had my second child I was I, I want it, it was the, the feeling was so strong of doing something different that I, tr I trusted my instinct and, and I went and, and studied a photography course um, but one thing is definitely clear if I would have set out to be a photographer with a successful business then I probably wouldn't have got to where I am now because I did it because I wanted to learn and I wanted to discover and I was I enjoyed the learning process I did it so that I could take pictures of my children for the rest of my life that was the sole purpose of doing the photography the training I thought what a nice skill to have if I can take pictures of my kids for the rest of their lives, how nice would that be? And that was what I set out to do it for. I didn't set out because I was like, oh, I'm gonna work for myself, I'm gonna have my own business, I'm gonna open my own studio, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, try and be the best photographer in this area. I didn't do it for that reason. I did it because I wanted to take pictures of my children. The fact that I found my thing and I found out what I was good at the rest then sort of evolved from that, but it wasn't intentional to get to where I am today. This has just sort of happened 
in the process. So yesterday I left off saying I got to the part where I've been on a beginner's course and I'd met Campbell and I'd left him my number and he'd contacted me and asked if I would like to assist him on a wedding. And I said and told you that I was excited but nervous and shitting it. So <clears throat> that's where I'm going to pick up from now. So it's the Saturday morning in August 2011 and it's the day of this wedding. And I am beyond nervous. Like the only way I can, if I think back at times when I've been that nervous before, I would say going in to have a section with Georgia and getting married. Them are the two times that I remember being that nervous. Um, because this this was a big deal. This this was huge. This was, I, I bought a second hand camera six months ago and now I'm going to do somebody's wedding. Now there's pressure with weddings. It, it's a one off thing. It's a one day thing. If you get it wrong, you're screwed. So, and, and that's never left me. It's, I, I, oh my God. If I could get rid of my nerves on the morning of the wedding and my anxiety, I would probably do more weddings. But, oh my God, I am, I like zone out on the day of the wedding. Like, you, I, I can't speak, I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm planning in my head. And I know this, I'm talking about now. So even now, nine years on, loads of experience, 100 weddings in, under my belt, but this is still the process I go through. I would have spent the day before charging batteries, clearing cards, making sure I've got everything that I need. And I know my bags are packed and I'm good to go. My stuff's ironed, ready to put on. But I'm getting ready and I'm feeling sick and I'm feeling scared and I'm feeling nervous and anxiety takes over on like, what if this happens? And what if that happens? And what if when she's walking down the aisle, my camera stops working? or my flash doesn't go off, or all these crazy things that I know them myself, I've got that thing covered, I have two cameras on me, One, for, one's never stopped working, but if it did, I've got backup, I've got a second shooter with me, if I collapse there and then, and I, and I faint, whatever, I've got a second shooter, mm -hmm. and you know, I've got, I've got it covered, but it still doesn't stop them feelings, and that anxiety, and that nerves, but them feelings are what are there because I care. They're there because it means a lot to me. And I care about the people I'm working for and I care about my job and I, and I, and because I care so much comes with that is all this adrenaline and, and nervous excitement and, and nerves. So I know it's not a bad thing it's just something I have to learn to deal with. And as soon as I get to my venue or wherever the bride is and I've took, I get my camera and I've took my first shot, I'm good. I'm good. I'm in it. I'm on it. I'm, I'm in my element. I'm doing the thing that I love and I, I'm, all, I'm all right. It's just that build up. It's horrendous. It, it's, it's just the, the way I deal with it is I have a playlist on Spotify and, and I listen to the songs that I know will sort me out and that's the way I deal with it. Now if I'm travelling to a wedding and um, I've got Tom with me which is my second shooter then us chatting again is what can me down and I know, I know I'll be okay but I've only worked these things out after a, you know quite a few um, years so this first wedding and I'm on my own and I'm going to the place where the wedding's at I, I, I've not experienced this kind of nerves before. I've not experienced the, you're gonna be all right when you get there. You're gonna do a great job, don't worry. I've not experienced that at this point. So I am, I'm struggling, I'm nervous, I feel sick. And, I'm, and I get to the McDonald's car park where I'm meeting Campbell and I get there really, really early. Which is probably an even worse thing really because then I'm sat waiting and it's even worse. But anyway, he arrives. And he briefs me and he says, right, we're going to the bride's house. 
we're going to get some shots of her getting ready and then we're going to um we're going to go to uh, the, the warrington register office and then we're going to go to this pub for the small gathering after so we go to the bride's house and obviously campbell's ultra familiar with them because he knows them and i feel a little bit of a spur part um and i'm you know oh, i'm not really quite sure what i'm supposed to be doing so i'm kind of just not trying to get in the way but trying to take on board what he's told me and, and I'm, I'm taking pictures of she's holding a bouquet next to the window and we're getting some shots of, of that and and you know different things but the the house was there was a lot of people there you know the house was full of people and I, and I was really out of my comfort zone so we're not at the house for long we're probably there about 20 minutes something like that and then we, we drive then to Warrington register office and he's going in, Campbell's going in his car and I'm going in my car. And I'm, I'm then worried, what if I lose him in traffic and I don't know where we're at to go? And, and what if, you know, I get, I, I'm just, I'm late and I miss the ceremony. And again, all these crazy things start going through me. I had the sat-nav on, I knew where I was going, but I still had that feeling of, oh my frigging God. Um, and I remember I've been in the car and I'm trying to make sure I stay behind him. And my dad rang me. And I remember thinking, not now, Mick, not now, love. I can't, I can't, co I can't speak to you. I can't deal with the conversation. I'm so focused on this. And I remember thinking, at that point, I remember thinking, Catherine, you either sink or you swim. And you've got two choices. You either man up and get this job done or you go under. And I think there's been so many times in my career, in my photography career, that I've got to that point because it's not plain sailing and it's not been easy and uh, there's shit gone down that has got me to that point where I've thought you either sink or you swim and you decide what to do and I ain't no failure so I've always swam for my life and pulled it off and that's the kind of mentality I was having on this day. So the register office at Warrington, um, it's just a little room in the office and this is a really small wedding, there must have been like 20 guests, something like that. And Campbell said, you stay at the back and I'll go up front and um, and just put put that lens on that you bought, you know, shoot at 2.8 and just get some images of them from the back and, and different things like that. So a registry ceremony is literally like 15 minutes, it's, it's not long at all. And they got to that point where they say, and I'm shooting away and I'm taking pictures and, and I'm taking pictures of like the chairs that they sat on and the legs underneath and, and different, I'm trying to be creative in a room that's not very creative. Um, but I, I, I wanted to do a good job. I wanted to have a, a real good bash at it. So they, um, they get to that point where they've said the vows and they say, you can now kiss the bride. And so they start kissing and everyone starts crack, crack, uh, clapping. I start crying. Literally, big dobbers rolling down my face. And I'm, and it's as though all the day's emotion has just gone woo, and just come to the top. And I am, I'm, and, and Campbell's look, he come over and he went, oh, you're all right, what's all? And I was just like, I've just done my first wedding. And it was just like, I've done my first wedding oh my god so it was a mixture of emotion I was crying because I'm an emotional wreck anyway and, and it's not unlike me to fill up at weddings I, I, you know speeches get me dads who see the brides get me um, grooms who cry they get me um, and there's plenty of times when I've, I can take a shot and I look on the back of my camera and I just fill up and think oh my freaking god they are gonna love that picture and I think because I'm that emotional, it's a good thing. Because if I feel that emotion, then I can see that emotion. I know what it looks like. I know what it feels like. And if I didn't have that's that's is it a skill? I don't know. If I didn't have that about me, then how could I take pictures of it? How could I take? How could I capture? so that you're looking at an image and you can feel the emotion in the picture. And it's because I feel it as well as see it. So it's easy for me to then 
press the button at the right time. And that's a big thing in photography because you can, you can digital, you can shoot as much as you want, you can fire as much as you want, but it's not about that. It's about being able to second guess a little bit what's going to happen. It's about having your focus ready and going at the right time. It's about being focused on somebody because it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, no. And it's capturing it at the right time and knowing and anticipating what's gonna happen and then being able to press the button at the right time. So it's not a bad thing to be emotional. It's not a bad thing to express my feelings. It's it's not a bad thing to have because it it does it does the a good thing for me in in the line of work that I'm in. So this emotion that's happening now at this wedding, I'm I'm just I've got to pull myself together because I don't want them to see me crying because they'll just think I'm weird. But for me, it was release. It was have freaking done it. I have done my first wedding and I couldn't be happier. I'm buzzing. I'm absolutely. I've done it. I've turned up and I've and, and all I've done is take pictures of a couple from the back of the room. I haven't done what I do now. I've just done that bit. But for me, it was it was a massive achievement at that point. So the ceremony's over and we go outside and this if you've been to Warrington Register Office, there's like steps leading up to the to the door. And they um they all come out, bridegroom, little bridesmaids and all the family and everything. And and Campbell says, Right, go on. I'm like organize them all like put them in put them where you want them to be when I say threw me in at the deep end I can't I can't what the hell he literally threw me in without a dinghy or anything I literally threw me in at the deep end and I was just like Oh my God, what? And he was like, go on, you, you sort them out how you want them to stand and where you want them to be and, and then we can take the shot. And so it was just like, oh, okay, all right. So, um, right. And anybody who knows me and who knows that, and whose wedding I've done, no, like, I take no prisoners and you'll know that. I'm just like, right, you're going to go here, you're going to go here, you're going to stand there, turn around, get a drink, get, no, put your handbag down. I, I'm like, someone called me the Hitler of photography. I got, that's what someone called me at my last wedding. You're like the Hitler of photography. And I was just like, I'll take that as a compliment because uh, it means I'm a good leader. Uh, I'm not saying Hitler was a good leader, by the way. Um, but no, I've got the confidence because I know how I want it to look and I know what I want and I know I'm on a time schedule and I am just, I've got to be able to get this thing rolling and take control. Then, newbie, wow i would just like okay so like if you stand there and and i were like sort of doing it but thinking but as i as I did it more and more and we did a few more shots and i was like right the bridesmaids come in now and okay so if you want to stand there for a minute and why would just do this and and it it was it was the best experience really that i could have been given because i didn't watch someone else do it and then figure it stuff out i I, I did it the way I, I'd not probably have developed and do it now. So I, I did it and, and Campbell was like, you're great at this, you. You are great at this. And I was just like, oh, that's nice. Like just feeling as though that's a nice thing to say. And I, I don't feel like I'm good at it right now. I'm just, I haven't got anything to go off. I haven't done it before. So I'm just doing what feels natural to me. So we did these group shots and then he says to me, right, I'm going to take the bride and groom um, off now to do a couple shots. Um, you stay here. And there was like four or five little bridesmaids and he was just like, just get some shots of the bridesmaids on the steps. So I was like, that's fine. So I've got these little bridesmaids and we've already thrown the confetti. So there's confetti all over the floor. And these bridesmaids are, are, are picking, it, picking it up again. And, and throwing it again over themselves. So I'm snapping away and taking pictures of, of that. And then this little girl um, was, was picking it up and she just threw it, right? Like all the others were and everything. And she's, she's got teeth missing because she's at that age where she's, 
you know, not got her adult teeth yet, she's lost her baby teeth. And I didn't think nothing of it. It was just one of a series of shots of kids throwing confetti and messing about on the steps and bending over and, and all that kind of thing. So we'd finished at Warrington Register Office, we got in our cars and we went to the pub where they were having this small gathering. And we didn't stay there very long, it was just an hour um, because they were getting ready to have this buffet and, and all that and we'd kind of done. So Campbell says to me, look, it's up to you, but if you wanna come back to my house now, I can show you how to get them off your card, get them onto your Mac, and be able to start importing your images and how then you would choose which pictures you want and which pictures you don't want and which are the ones you're going to edit and you know I will show you how I do it so I was just like yeah oh my god yeah that'd be brilliant because again you know I, I've it's all new Lightroom was new Photoshop was new memory cards and all this it's, it's all brand new stuff to me so the more I can learn off somebody I'm super like appreciative of it so we goes back to Campbell's house which was in Northwich at the time and he import he, he plugs my card in and he starts pulling me images through and they're coming up on the screen and he's going oh my god that's these are really good these are brilliant well done like you've done well though with these um obviously I'm a beginner you know and I haven't got the knowledge I've got now so they were good for the stage that I was at. So we're pulling them across and we get to these pictures of, of these kids throwing confetti. And he just goes, wow, how good's that? And he goes, Kathy, honest to God, that's award winning that. That is fantastic. And it's a, this picture of this little girl with teeth missing and throwing confetti. He went, I'm not joking now. I'm, being, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass or anything. I'm telling you, that is fantastic. And I was just like, oh, he's just being nice to me because he's trying to give me a bit of confidence and, you know, congratulate me on doing an half decent job with him today. So I kind of took it on board and was chuffed to bits that he thought it was good because, you know, he's the photographer and I'm just learning off him. So I appreciated that he'd said nice things. He said that some of the, you know, some of the stuff that I'd done was really good. And this particular image was, in his words, award winning. But... I was second it with a pinch of salt because I didn't know any different. I just, I didn't know if it was good or not. I just thought, whatever. So, went on that night, obviously, still loving, loving the day. Um, just had a great time, had a great day, learnt loads, felt a massive sense of accomplishment and that was at the end of August um, 2011 and at, the, at that time I'd started getting like just friends saying um, Mick again, he always rings me, my dad. Um, it, I started getting requests for have you got a price list and have you got um, how much do you charge and things like that so I had started with a little price list and I was offering shoots and I was mobile and I was started going to people's houses and I wasn't charging a lot because I was um, I was new and I was still learning and I was still going through all the motions of being nervous and apprehensive and scared um, but I was earning you know a small amount of money but I wanted to do things properly. So on the 1st of September, 2011, I contacted HMRC and I said, I'm, I'm, I'd like to register as a sole trader. Um, and that was just so that I could start, because I, I wanted to buy, all of a sudden there's all these things that, that I needed and, and I wanted to buy. And, and the only way I could do that is if I had a sole trader, then I could put it through as an expense and stuff. So I needed to register myself as a business um, so that when I did buy something, I could claim it, you know, put it through as an expense. So I registered as a, a sole trader in September 2011. So October, and Tony comes on from work, and I said to him, I've entered a competition. He went, oh, right, okay. 
And I was like, you know that picture from that wedding I did with Campbell and that little girl he, he said was really good? He was like, yeah. And I said, I've entered that into, um, into a competition. Um, and he was like, right, what, what competition is it? I said, it's the Sony World Photography Awards. He was like, what? I was like, I've entered, I've entered that image into the Sony World Photography Awards. And I was like, because he said it was dead good, so I thought, well, might as, might as well. It's 20 quid for enter a picture, and you could enter up to three pictures, but I've just entered that one because I, I've never done it before. But I just thought, why not? Just have a go, just see what happens. So my little business was had started to grow October, November, December, um, and, I, and I was learning still in the modules. I was getting ready to go back to work. I had gone back to work in the September. This was October I'd entered. Um, and I'm starting to do these little shoots and I remember them all. And I've even got a list of everyone that I did and, and you know, what they bought and everything because I'm in and like that. So I remember all my shoots. And, and the amazing thing is now, like, these babies and these bumps that I was shooting in 2011 are now eight and nine year old. It just blows my mind. So in January 2012... I got an email from the Sony World Photography Awards to say I'd been commended by Sony and I was being exhibited at Somerset House in London as a commended photographer for the category that I'd entered. Okay, so the category that I entered was called Split Second. So there was categories called Travel, Smile, Political. Um, there was all these different categories that you could enter under and I entered that image under a category called split second because it was a split second shot she's throwing confetti a hers lifting up she's got this gappy smile and I think she's I'm just looking at it now because I've got something well she's twisting her tongue near to this gap in her mouth and she's and it's just and it's against these doors that are at um Warrington Register Office, that's what's in the background. So I get this email and I, and I can't take it in. I'm like, 52 countries, 72,000 submissions, and I am top 50 in the split second category. And that I am being exhibited in London at Somerset House in April and that I am invited to go down to the to the exhibition. So I couldn't process this information because I'm I'm just this I'm new and I'm I'm still learning. And I went to a wedding as an assistant with a second hand camera with a ninety-nine pound lens on. And, and they've chosen my image. Like, he said it was award winning and he were right. But that was just, it just was like, it, it did me the world of good because it gave me a lot of confidence and it made me feel as though I had some credibility. Um, so finding that out and knowing that I'd achieved that was just unbelievable. Um, so we went to London in April, where the, ex the exhibition was, and we went in, and, and there's, it's a massive gallery, and, and we went to the part that was showing the category split second, and there's these massive plasmas on wall, like huge plasmas, and I've got Erica in pram, because she's one, in my little pink pram, and George's just turned four, and, and there's... Everyone stood looking at these screens because on these screens would come the person's name, the country that they came from, and then the image. So we stood there because it's like a rolling thing. So you, I didn't know when my image was going to come on, but I knew it was in the right area. So Georgia needed a wig, right? So Tony said, I'll take her. So Tony and Georgia go for a wig, find the toilets. And I'm stood there with my pram and I'm thinking, this is surreal. There's all these geeky 
camera people, there's all these old men, you know, from all over the world, and there's all these different people, and there's me from Lee, with my pram. And I'm like, it was just a crazy, crazy moment. Next minute, my image comes on the screen, big, massive thing. And the next screen then is um, Catherine Brown, United Kingdom. Oh, it gives me goosebumps. Right, so I'm just like, I wanted to literally just go, that's me, that's me with my pram, and my baby in pram, that's me. Because all these names were coming up and they were going like, such and such a body, Russia. And then the next one would be such and such a body, Belgium, and such and such a body, China. And so it was like, random throughout the world. And then Catherine Brown, United Kingdom. And I was just like, I wanted to literally just tell everybody that that was me. Um, and what I did was, Tony missed it, because he'd gone to the toilet with Georgia. So I had my phone like, here. And I just, when it, I was ready. So when it came on, I did take two snaps of the screen because I thought, I've peaked. I'm 12 months into learning how to take pictures and I've peaked <laughs> and I don't know if it's ever going to get any better than this um, because I just thought, you know, I, I've, I've got a second hand camera and I'm not dissing the second hand camera. What I'm saying to you is I pay thousands and thousands of pounds now for my cameras and my lenses, right? Because I'm nine years into my business and, I, and I've developed, but back then, I had a second hand camera with a 99 pound lens and I got into the Sony World Photography Awards. How, how inspiring is that to know that it doesn't matter what tools you've got. It doesn't matter. You know, people will always say to me, I'll show them pictures on the back of my camera. And the, the thing that people always say is, how good's that camera? And I'll say, yeah, but you wouldn't say to an artist, how good are your brushes? And you wouldn't say to Gordon Ramsay, who's cooked the most amazing meal, how good are your pans? Yeah? It isn't the tools you're using. And my story proves that. Because I've not, I've not won any awards since. Yeah? I might have had the best cameras and I might have had the best lenses because I invest in good quality equipment. But I haven't won any awards since. But I've not entered any because I've just not. But the 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 cheaper product got me there anyway. So it, it it's it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you haven't got the money to invest in the best of everything straight away. Because if you've got the skill and you've got the talent, you'll get there anyway. So it doesn't matter. So I, we, we had a great few days in London and everything and I came back and the good thing about it was then Sony emailed me um, like a, a, a logo, like a badge thing that I could then add on to emails, I could put on my website and it said, Commended Photographer 2012. And I would say that that then rocketed me. Um, it might have just been my mindset of I've achieved this and so it's, it's give me the right to kind of put myself out there. It, it really did um, give me the confidence to take it further and, and believe in myself that I have got a skill and, and I've just proved it because I've just, I've just nailed that. Like that day, that wedding, you know, if someone would have said to me, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna go and assist on this wedding and there's gonna be a random image that you're gonna take in there that's gonna get you into Somerset House in London and get you exhibited as a commended Sony photographer. You know, and, and like I said, I were, I were worried that what if it never gets any better than this and what if, what if I've peaked too soon and, and this is as high as I'll ever go. Um, but it certainly did give me that confidence to really make stuff happen. You know, get me head into it, get, focused me more, understood that um, I wanted to do this for the rest of my life. I really, I, I just took so much enjoyment out of it. So from that, 
the business grew and I'm here now 90, uh, 90, nine years on. And the reason yesterday that I told you about I worked in the different jobs is because now that I work for myself, I've taken bits from everything that I've learned in other jobs and applied it to my job now. So when I worked in retail and I learned how to graft, Jesus, you have to work hard in retail, it's bloody hard work. When I worked for John Lewis, the customer service training is second to none. It's, the, it's one of the best retailers. And then when I worked um, in the motor industry and I managed my own diary and I worked out when I was going to see my customers and when I was going to do my test drives and when I was going to do my handovers, I managed my own diary. And so what I've learned is that the things that I was doing then was in a way setting me up for what I do now. And the way I can explain it is like Karate Kid didn't understand why I was waxing on and waxing off until he went into the fight. And it's the same kind of thing, like, I didn't realise that the jobs that I was doing, I was learning skills and picking things up without realising that where I'm, when I am where I want to be now and doing the job that I love, I've brought them skills with me. So even if you're not doing something that you love now, or even if you're not feeling like you're not where you should be, there's something else, then what I'm saying to you is don't stress about it because there'll be a reason and, and when you get there, you'll look back and realise that's why it's kind of like trusting in destiny really. Um, so I just wanted to tell you that story from the beginning, which was obviously part one yesterday. Part two was today, was the actual wedding and the uh, you know, submitting the uh, the image and being commended as a Sony photographer and everything else. And, you know, I'm three, three studios, of open three studios now. And, you know, the future looks good. The future's exciting. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm buzzing about everything that's, that's happening in my business, which is great. Another good piece of information is that on the 3rd of April, there will be Northwest Wedding Magazine will go on sale and I'm being featured, yay. Um, so I am having, there's a four page spread and it's a real life wedding and it's one of my weddings from last July, Holly and Jack. Um, beautiful stunning wedding at Ashfield House decorated by uh, Rose Boutique. And Northwest Wedding Magazine approached me and asked me, could they feature one of my weddings as one of the real life wedding features? And they've chosen this wedding and it's going into April, May's edition. Um, and that was all finalized yesterday. And that's going on sale on 3rd of May. I'm sure I'll be back on before then for plug it even more, but I'm super chuffed about that. That's, that's brilliant. I mean, to go from nine years ago, shooting a wedding where I don't know what I'm doing to now being featured in a magazine as a Northwest wedding photographer, it's fantastic. You know, I'm, I'm can't, I can't wait to see it. I've not seen it yet, but I'm really looking forward to that and I'm and I'm proud that I've um, accomplished that as well. So everything's good. There is more news to come in the, in the next few weeks. So I will be back to tell you more information about what's happening in the world of Cathy Brown Photography. Um, it's, it's getting bigger and better. So that's all I can say at the moment, but I'm dead excited because I've kept this secret since last October. Um, and it's and I, and I can't wait for it to start being able to tell you more and show you more and everything else. So just bear with me on that one, but it's good. So I hope you've enjoyed part one and part two. I was under a bit of pressure to make sure part two was as good as part one because I'd had 1,700 views and all these comments and likes and phone calls and everything. And I just thought, oh God, what if part two isn't as good as part one? And everyone just goes, oh, that, let, that were a bit of a letdown, wouldn't it? But I wanted to just, again, explain to you my story of how I got here. Have you always been a photographer? The answer is no, but oh my God, what a journey in getting here. And it's been amazing. So I hope you enjoyed it. Have a fabulous weekend, whatever you're doing. I know the weather's not the best, but Make sure you uh, have a good weekend and uh, I'll see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.